Good afternoon, everyone. We're just going to wait about a minute. It's, it's now one o'clock. We'll just wait one more minute as people are joining us. But welcome. We see people now dropping in. So uh, welcome. Welcome to the Elder Lady Illumination session. Just going to give it about another half a minute here. Okay. We'll get started. Good afternoon and welcome to this, today's webinar. It's part one of a two part series on LED drivers. My name is Ho Chang. I'm a senior director of specification sales at Illuminations Inc., formerly New York Digital. Today's webinar is presented to you by Illuminations, Acuity Brands, and of course, Eldoled. If during the presentation you should have a question, feel free to use the questions section of the GoToWebinar menu and we'll do our best to address it. I'm, in, I'm pleased to introduce today's speaker. Hey Holzman, Specification Service Director at Eldoled, is an expert in the area of LED drivers with special focus on dimming, flicker, and on compatibility with lighting control networks. Hey works closely with many major lighting design firms throughout Europe, the Asia Pacific, and the US. He shares his knowledge via special training sessions and LED driver workshops. He regularly trains groups of master's students in lighting design at a number of universities around the world, including Hochschule Wismar in Germany, KTH University in Stockholm, Sweden, and the Bartlett University College London. His lighting and semiconductor experience comes from his past activities at Philips Lighting OEM, and prior to that at NXP Semiconductors. Please welcome Hey Holzman. Oh, Sam, many thanks for this uh, for this introduction. It's uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to talk to you today, the uh, the New York City based um, lighting design community, Osam and uh, and the team. Um, it's uh, much appreciated by me to be able to uh, to talk to you and thanks for uh, for inviting me to indeed trying to teach you and try to talk to you today about LED drivers, which is um, for many designers always a tough subject to uh, to understand and to grasp. So this is why I uh, it's my kind of crusade in order to make the light design community understand about the importance of a driver when it comes to quality of light, when it comes to the creation of good light. And I mean, many of you have been in, in, uh, in lighting for, for many years, I guess. And so in the old days, uh, a driver was a given, fluorescent lighting or HID lighting, nobody really cared, but you all know that in LEDs, the choice of a driver is crucial because sometimes your dimming is not so nice and sometimes the magic that you would like your lights to, to, to do is basically not always uh, perfect. So um, today I'm um, presenting this webinar for the lighting design community in uh, New York City, uh, as said, uh, being invited uh, via illumination. Um, if you're not from New York City, uh, feel free to, to join as well. And if you're not a lighting designer, that's also not a problem um, because obviously, uh, hopefully you will learn as such, but I'll address the lighting design community. It's uh, I hope that's clear to you. So two topics. Uh, it's a two two uh, part uh, webinar. The first one is uh, today, which I will teach you basically about LED driver basics. I will teach you about proper dimming. I will teach you about flicker, about dimming curves, everything that a driver does to quality of light. And next week, same time, we have a second webinar where we talk about lighting controls, interoperability, and also human centric lighting. Um, it is sometimes a very technical subject um, because, well, a driver is obviously a very technical component, but I'll try to explain it in an easy way. Um, so it's rather geeky stuff, but I'll try to make it uh, simple and understandable for all of you. And should you have any questions, I'm not sure who some of you mentioned that already, feel free to put them in the questions um, um, uh, section of the, um, of the webinar. Right, there's not a training that I start by mentioning that we as a component supplier, I mean, in essence, what we do as a company, as Elderled, is we manufacture and we make things like this, drivers. I'll take a deep dive, but this driver has a major impact on how, in the end, light consumers actually experience light. And traditionally, obviously, we sell our drivers to luminaire makers. 
um, because a lumina maker designs a fixture and he in that fixture he puts an LED and piece of metal and heat sink and electronics a driver and in the end that total component that total fixture is then being sold to well, I don't know the museum the bar the restaurant um, and via that light that a light consumer is actually being influenced and for that is a crucial person because this is um, where I will talk about uh, the, the effect that light has on this uh, person uh, so the, the light consumer that actually experiences light and the light design community is basically communic communicating to everybody in the chain and you well you want your magic you want your ideas to become reality you want your magic to uh, to basically happen and the, and the driver is crucial in, in achieving just that so this is just an uh, an intro right let's dive into the the content of today because the content of today is threefold I'll start by giving you an introduction to and what is a, what is a lighting system. And obviously, I'll start with this. I'll start with the luminaire itself. I'll start with an LED. What is an LED, uh, technically? And then I'll move to how does the driver actually interact with this LED? And this is where current comes in. Rather geeky, but very important. And then next week, I will discuss further and go further on how is the driver being talked to? Which protocols, which languages actually do exist? If you want, if you wish your your lighting to to go uh, to go uh, to go smooth and to 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 uh, to talk to uh, to talk to you about that, right? So let's start with the luminaire itself, the uh, the LEDs. If you ask a geek, well, like me, um, and ask him what an LED is all about, he will come up with this little drawing here. An LED is a light emitting diode, so it's a it's a semiconductor chip. It's a component that actually gives light if you send current through that LED. There's an anode which is positive and a cathode which is negative and current give light. The more current I give to this LED, the more light comes out. And the less current I give to the LED, the less light comes out. And I would say this is the starting point of, of light. So this is the starting point of which you need to understand electrically as well, if you would like to understand how quality of light makes uh, is, uh, is, uh, is dependent uh, is dependent here. And then when I started uh, my training sessions, I worked for Elbelet, I would say 10 years, and we immediately start talking to to lighting designers. I always imagined that everybody actually understood what current was, and I found out, especially if you're new to the lighting design business, that is not. Current is like the flowing element of electricity. And again, it's oversimplification, but I hope you don't uh, um, uh, you don't be offended by the simple explanation. But it's like the water in a plumbing system. We measure water in liters or in gallons or in pints or whatever, but current is actually being measured in amps or in milliamps. So that's the first point that you need to understand. Current give light. Second point in electricity where it's crucial is voltage. Um, we measure voltage in volts and voltage is like, if you compare that to, again, a plumbing system, it's like the water pressure in a plumbing system. If your water hose is very thin and a lot of water is running through, your water pressure is very high. A similar thing is happening in electricity and we call that volt voltage um, the potential difference if you wish right if you multiply those two voltage and current volts and amps you get energy and we measure energy in watts power and that's a different word and obviously this is a crucial point too because if people invest in led lighting this is where energy well less energy consumption comes in the whole green aspect of led lighting is uh, is crucial but it's always a um, a multiplication of voltage and, uh, and amps. Why do I start here? Because I need you to understand that this is the starting point of good light as well. Um, and there are many different LEDs. And um, here you get an overview of, I don't know, well, many different LED suppliers that sometimes, I guess you do specify. I'm sure you know Xicato or EcoSense, Sora or Cell Semiconductors and all have their own technical characteristics on the amount of light that comes out, the, the color rendering, the TM30, the, the the phosphorus that they create. I won't discuss this. This is for other people to uh, to uh, to uh, to explain this to you. But in essence, they all need current in order to well to to get uh, well to get a certain illumination level. Right. This is uh, the first point. Companies like this, and here you see a whole overview of luminum makers, um, and some of them are part of the line card of uh, uh, illuminations, and other are not. And for me today. It's not to basically talk to you so much about how it's being sold and who is uh, who is selling what. No, it's basically the idea that luminaire makers, they make choices in their fixtures about which components are inside. So they make a choice of a luminaire, sorry, of an LED, and then they make a certain design. And some designs are better than others, and you like some better than others. But they also make choices 
many of them in the choice of a driver. And sometimes that's okay for you in your projects and sometimes this is not. So I would love you to understand today that you do have a choice as well in making that driver part of your specification process too. So that at least you know that certain drivers create certain effects. And this is what I'm doing, uh, what I'm doing today as, uh, as well in, uh, in, that, uh, in that area. So let's go to, um, to this, to, 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 to a driver. And if I ask two students, for example, at universities and ask them what a driver is, most of them actually come with rather technical explanations, like it's power conversion and it's, I don't know, you get many, many different technical uh, characteristics. What does it do to light is a very simple question, but not so simple to answer. Um, because in essence, what the driver brings to light is rather simple. It's extremely simple, actually, because it arranges the LED to being switched on and off at the right light level. So just switching on and off. And secondly, it is about all the magic that the LED needs to do in order to, well, to, well, to create a certain ambience. Basically, the proper dimming is being done by the LED driver and also color change of the LED, suppose the LED can change color, you have, a, you have a module that can do that, that managing of that color, that is also being done by, by, the, uh, by the driver. An LED never changes color, never dims by itself. There's always electronics inside that actually make that, uh, make that happen. And if we talk about um, uh, uh, drivers as, uh, as such, um, obviously, if you play golf, this is a driver too. And obviously, we won't talk about this driver today, nor will we talk about this driver, and I don't know if you know, um, some of you might be far too young to understand who, his name is David Hasselhoff. Um, he, um, he, he uh, the night rider, I'm sure you know him. Um, he drives Kit, and Kit is a car, so he's a driver too. Not will I discuss this driver. No, today it's about electronics in a fixture that basically makes sure that, well, what actually does a driver do? It actually nothing more, if you look technically to what a driver does, it acts as a current tap because the driver is the element in your luminaire that basically takes, takes care of the amount of current that actually is being, is flowing to the LED in order for that LED to, well, to get illuminated and to be dimmed as well. And this is what I will discuss later in my, later in my story. So switching it on and off, dimming it, um, technically acting as a tap, supplying the right amount of current towards the LED. Technically, that's what the driver does. And um, many times, and I think in the USA, most of the time, always the driver is actually part of your luminaire. Right? So it's actually integrated into your fixture. I have to say that in Europe, uh, sometimes it's, uh, it's different. I don't know if you know that. Um, I'm actually talking to you not from the USA. I am based in Europe. Eldolet is uh, originally a Dutch company. I am based in, in, uh, in the Netherlands. Eldolet is based in the Netherlands. That's where I live and this is where my talk uh, comes from today. And you, uh, with you, it's uh, 1 p.m. Here it's um, 6 p.m. So uh, evening has started uh, over here. Um, a driver is inside, inside the fixture and all the names for drivers are ballasts or transformers and that's all okay, but in essence, it's an LED driver. So how can I make the driver to tell him, well, to tell the LED how much how much current is actually needed in order to do so. So in the old days, and sometimes still drivers, there are dip switches on drivers. Hey, you had a dip switch, 300 milliamps and 500 milliamps and 700 milliamps. And now you know that this actually defines, based on the technical characteristics of the LED, how much light actually comes out. Because if you download a specification sheet from, I don't know, whatever LED is from, Cicato, you will see that there's a direct regulation between the amount of current that this LED receives and the amount of light that comes out. The more current I give to that LED, the more light comes out. But if you give that LED too much current, um, now suppose the maximum amount of current that the LED can, uh, can receive is, uh, I don't know, 900 milliamps, you give them a thousand, one amp, it can actually be destroyed. It's like a balloon in the end, the LED. Yeah? It receives current, it receives water, and at a certain point, the technical characteristics of the LED is as such that there is a maximum capacity of the balloon. And if you give them too much, it breaks. So you have to make sure that you really understand how the cooperation between this driver and this LED actually, uh, actually works. So elder light drivers, and I would say all drivers, some have dip switches, but you have to look at this driver as a little computer. It needs to be programmed. It needs to be told how much current it needs to give. And in order to do so, you, you have to program it. And the programming of an elder led driver is rather simple. 
especially for you as lighting designers, you hook it up to a little, well, a little dongle, you see that here on the screen, we call that the toolbox, you download some flex tool software, we call that from our website, and then you have a, you have a way to actually program this driver. Tell the driver how much current needs to give towards this LED, 700 milliamps, 782 milliamps, and then you can actually define the amount of light that that you that you do in your in your project and traditionally this programming of the driver is not done by you traditionally that is done by the lumina maker that i just said because he knows and that company knows what type of leds are actually connected so he he uh, he's sure that he can't he or she can't do any damage in order to create that uh, that uh, that that good light but in mock-ups and this is what i'm trying to teach lighting designers as well feel free to play around with these current levels in order for your light levels to change as well and this is where many uh, many lighting designers actually do play with drivers and play around with them and make sure that uh, they make that part of their design process of and in that idea of bringing that bright ideas into reality and that's uh, this is what uh, so this is the basic idea of uh, of a driver i hope you're still with me because now we go to the uh, to the next topic which is dimming and i said to you already um well, no, never is an LED dimming by itself. It needs electronics in order to uh, to do so. And if I talk about quality of dimming, and I'm sure you know that much better than myself, there are two main influencers on the quality of that, well, of that dimmed light. And that is, well, once and for all, this is where we will start. Which technology is the driver using in order to manage this current? And there, there I will take a deep dive later. This is where lighting technology really comes in and secondly which language do we actually talk and this is for me next week and so today i will focus on this part and in next week's session i will i will focus on controls uh, and light dali one to ten dmx this is uh, this is for next week but today it's really about current control and if you talk about quality of dimming well i always say and this is where i've introduced i'm introducing to you here um a, a, a term that we within Elderlet call natural dimming, because the best dimming um, available, well, is the sun. Yeah, because in the end, uh, if you uh, the human species exists for I don't know 50,000 years, and we are used to live under the well under natural light and daylight, um, and the dimming experience of daylight or the color changing experience of daylight, this is something that we're used to as a, as a, human, as a human being. And if we now look to um, electric light and the dimming effects that we, that, we, that we had there, then I would say that incandescent lighting or um, halogen lighting dims actually very nice because it dims perfectly to really low levels. And in the end, it gets a little warmer in, in well, in ambience, in color temperature as well. And this mimics the sun if you wish. LEDs, mm, that's tougher to manage this. I'm not saying it's impossible, but this is definitely tougher to, to manage. And this is where many people think that LED dimming is not good and it's tough, and this is it. But this is exactly what I'm trying to teach you today. So at least understand the technology that is behind it. Because you can dim to certain levels and you can dim to, I don't know, 10% or to 1% or to 0.1%. I will teach you about these differences. How does it impact the human body as, uh, as such? And obviously, if we talk about dimming, we don't want steppiness in our dimming process. We don't want the LED to dim like this, eh, so that you actually see all that steppiness. Neither would you like to see flicker. I mean, you don't want to, to, uh, to, to, to look to your LED light and that you, you basically dims like a stroboscope. That's not nice. And if you see it, that's bad. But some people are hypersensitive and they sense bad dimming lights. They get headaches out of it. And also here, I will take a deep dive in doing this because the driver is the limiting factor here. The driver is many times in charge of this bad dimming process. And also here, I will give you some independent recommendations that can help you in your design process as, uh, as such. And last but not least, there's another thing that's not to, to do much with, with health stuff, but it, it's the dimming process itself. If you have a slider, a rotary switch, and sometimes you see if you if you dim the, 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 the slide, if you move the slider down or up, that certain part of moving the slider down, that you don't actually see a, a light change. And you need that whole dimming process to be done in the last 50%, then you have 
100% available and your, your dimming process is actually being reduced to just a tiny little bit of your um, dimmer scale. And this is what I call that travel of the dimmer. And this is where I got a special request from somebody in, in, in who, was, who was participating today to talk to you about linear or logarithmic curves in, in drivers and in dimmers. And this is what I will talk to you about later as well to, to avoid this dead travel of the dimmer as, um, as well. So um, lighted controls next week, but this is where I will take a deep dive in and light, um, uh, an important protocol. We talk about DALI, more European protocol. Uh, we have DMX, there's many uh, wireless protocols as well. This is what I, will do, uh, what I will do next time. Right, let's move into dimming levels. Um, is dimming a trivial story? No, it's not, because I'm sure that in your projects you have experiences where dimming sometimes is lousy. <laughs> it doesn't dim to the right level. And you have drivers that dim to, well, I don't know, 5%, and other drivers dim to 1%. And then you have drivers that dim to 0.1%. And if you look to the specification of those two differences, them to 1 and them to 0.1, if you look to those percentages, you think, well, that's only 1% difference. Who cares? But this is where I'm going to teach you something which I hope you know already, but I'm sure you don't because many lighting designers don't know because there is a big visual difference in a driver that dims to 1% and the driver that dims to 0 0.1 because the visual difference is yeah because the human eye and now i get to the human body again the human eye is a bit strange because the human eye is extremely sensitive for low light levels and there is just a tiny little bit of light and um just well let's assume there's moonlight in in you're in the rocky mountain somewhere no electric lights uh, somewhere and you have a crescent moon, or I'm not sure what the English word about, but the moon is shimmering just a little bit. What happens is that that tiny little bit of light actually enters my eye because the pupil of my eye actually increases. And that tiny little bit of light has a good possibility to, well, to enter. So the human eye is not a logarithmic, uh, it's not a linear organ. <laughs> it's a logarithmic organ, if you wish, because tiny little bits of light still changes the way that I can that the human body can see, and it's still pretty well. And this is exactly what you should understand if we talk about dimming levels. Because the lighting industry talks about, well, the percentages that are always being shown when we talk about dimming levels, that has, that has nothing to do with perceived light. This goes with measured light. And measured light is me light that you measure with a, with, a, well, with a light meter, if you wish, not with the human eye. So if you have a driver that dims with a light meter to 1%, perception-wise, because of the non-linearity of the human eye, it actually dims to 10%. So a driver that dims to 1, in essence, only dims to 10. So what do you need to specify if you really want lower light levels than 10% in perception? Then you need to specify a driver that dims to 0.1%, 0.1%, because this 0.1% makes a big difference in this extreme sensitivity of the of the human eye. And this is where you need to have a driver that dims to dark. This is how we called it within LED, but it's 0.1%. And technically that is, a, that is a big difference. I will uh, later share with you in the summary, a video of two uh, light levels where you can actually make that visible. We have a, U a YouTube channel within LED and we have a very straight, a demonstrator of a difference that of a driver that dims to one and a driver that dims to zero point one, and then you will actually see that's a big difference. So dimming um, an, an LED that dims to one percent, use that in a cinema, and where the, the show uh, is the, the film is off, and you you need your light to be slowly switched on again. A driver that dims to one percent is just not good enough, because then the shock of zero to this. 10% level is rather rather big and that's not good enough. The same if you would like to mix colors. Mix colors next week, but also then you need a driver that is extremely accurate in those in those in those lower levels in order to to achieve all those colors that you want that you would like to uh, that you would like to achieve. And this is where you need to think of that lowest dimming level as um, as such. Mm, let's dive a little bit into the technicalities of why some drivers find it so difficult to actually dim properly. And this is to do with the technology that is behind this. So now I'll move away from the human eye 
and I will move into the electronics of your loom, of your driver that actually make that difference. It's technology that makes a difference here, and this is what I would like to uh, to teach you. So, I'm going to teach about three different dimming techniques that drivers have incorporated: pulse width modulation technology, CCR technology, and the other led way, hybrid hydro drive technology. But let me start with the middle one: CCR dimming. CCR dimming technology is nothing else than where you use the driver as a tap. I hope you remember my. Uh, so you give an LED a certain current, I don't know, 700 milliamps, and then you reduce the current to 500 milliamps. And by reducing this current, you give the LED less current and there is less light coming out, as easy as, as it is. But the difficulty of this technology is that in very low levels, this technology doesn't work because the accuracy of the tap of the driver's technology is not, well, not, not high enough, if you wish. It's not good enough. So if you close the tab, the lowest point that you can close the tab is, let's say, 100 to 150 milliamps. And if you give this amount of current to that LED, you already have a rather big amount of light coming out. And that's not so nice. So the industry has come up with a different technology, which we call pulse width modulation. And I'm sure you've heard this term. And in pulse width modulation, a different technique is being used. And the technique is called, yeah, a modulation technique and a modulation technique is nothing else that that it means that your eye is being faked your eye is being fooled because what happens here is that your led is giving a, a certain current let's assume seven milliamps and then the driver switches the current back to zero and then very quickly it it, it gives the current back to 700 again and then back to zero and then back to 700 and by modulating this current, so modulating is nothing else than switching that current, your LED is being switched on and off too. And if that is done quickly enough, then your eyes perceive that as a dimmed effect. But then actually they are fooled because the frequency of that modulation is so big that, well, that you don't see it. Hmm. But some driver manufacturers do that too slow and then you get flicker that you actually see. And some driver manufacturers do that not clever enough. And then hypersensitive people actually feel that as well. And that's the difficult point here. Pulse width modulation is a technique that with a fixed frequency that current is being switched on and off. 700, 0, 700, 0. And if you do it quick enough, your eyes perceive that as a dimmed effect. Right. We do that completely different. The technology in elder led drivers is completely different cleverer and basically um well so that you don't get all these negative impacts we call this hybrid hive dimming technology and it's different in two ways it's different in two ways because we don't switch the leds off anymore so we don't modulate the current between 700 and zero but let's say between 700 and 400 so we we reduce the current we reduce the amplitude of current rather techy but i hope you understand it's the size of the pulse and secondly, what we do different is that we don't modulate the current in a fixed frequency. We modulate the current in vari variable frequencies. And the fact that it varies, so that basically the modulation is in a different pattern, well, takes care already that a lot of negative impact on that flicker is being reduced. And it's easier for your brain to handle it without too many negative impacts. And this is uh, what we call hybrid hydro drive variational frequencies rather techy but again it's, it's it's a patented technology by the way of elder led so this is an important message as well but it's the choice that the driver manufacturer makes in creating light that is of good quality or not and now we come to uh so if we summarize the three technologies pulse width modulation is bad on flicker and bad on dim to dark so dear lighting designers of new york city stop specifying pulse width modulation drivers the technology is just not good enough. Really, bad news. CCR dimming is perfect on flicker because there is no, well, there's no uh, um, uh, flicker taking place because it doesn't modulate. The bad thing is you can't dim too dark. And there's another negative point. I didn't touch upon that because sometimes you can have an uncontrolled color shift as well because sometimes the LEDs are not binned properly or the binning is too big. And then you will see that if you reduce the current that sometimes you cut color differences in your LEDs as well with this technology. And that's bad news too. And surprise, surprise, 
if you use LLN hybrid hydro drive, you have a perfect story on Flickr. I'll make that objectifiable, by the way, later. Don't believe this yet, but uh, uh, I'll make this uh, measurable for you as well. And you can really dim to dark. And this is where elderly drivers make a difference in all of your projects. And this is where, again, I'm selling elderly to you as well, but it's a technology choice that you have to make as well in, 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 your, uh, in your understanding. Make it, forget everything, because that's very techy. Let's make it very simple. It's the way we use the tap. A current, a driver is a current tap. CCR dimmers, CCR drivers, is basically nothing else than a tap that you open and you close and you walk away and you get more or less light. It's a perfect way. Composite modulation is a technique in which there's a tap as well, but that tap is continuously open and closed. And every time you get a, a shock of current, a shock of water, and by doing so, your LEDs get being switched on and off as well. And uh, if you do that correctly, quick enough, you see a dimmed effect. If you do that incorrectly, there's flicker. But now there's elder LED. Elder LED has an improved modulation technique where we have digital technology inside the driver where we have multiple taps, variable frequencies. We play around with all these, these taps by opening them, opening and closing them at the same time, like like a harmony, like making music, if you wish. And then the flow of energy, the flow of current, the flow of water is as smooth as possible in order for your light to really be good for the human body. And this is where the difference of LED comes in compared to an LED driver. It's a current tap. And that's it. And that's really simple, a, a very straightforward and simple explanation of technology meeting the human body. And this is uh, where, where this comes in. But I have not this. Are you still with me? I hope you still uh, you're still with me. I hope you still understand it as well. Um, and feel free if you have questions. Feel free to put them in the uh, in the questions. Uh, uh, I hope I have time later to uh, to answer them as well. Flicker, flicker is a bad thing. We all know that. And I'm sure you've had projects where in the end uh, you specified flicker-free light, and in the end there was somebody complaining that it was flicker, and you thought I specified something nice. But it is an issue. There's not an ALD conference, there's not a dark room, whatever conference, there's not a, a university where you can become a lightning designer where this is not being taught. Um, there are hypersensitive people, fatigueness, eye strain, blurred vision. Uh, some people link it to, well, migraines and headaches, obviously. Uh, some people link it to epileptic, epileptic seizures or to uh, autism. No, let me get one thing straight. I am not a medically trained person. I'm not a doctor. I am a geek and I'm, uh, I'm going to teach you as well that there is an international recommendation for you to specify um, that actually help you to make light that is acceptable when it comes to flicker for human bodies, for human beings. And that's what we call the IEEE 1789 recommendation. This is what I will explain to you as well. Next to that, the bad thing about flicker is the impact on human bodies, but there's another negative impact. That's the impact on cameras. We would like to avoid this striping in our recordings. Same technology, different problem, and I will discuss this as well later in this uh, rest of the half hour that I, uh, that I have. First, an explanation of what is flicker. Technically, flicker is related to the size of the pulse. You remember? Modulation of current. The bigger my pulse, the, more, the higher the flicker percentage, the more flicker is in my light. That's number one. Secondly, the frequency. I already said to you, it's the quicker I modulate, the better it is. And the other way, the slower I modulate, the worse it is. It's like if the flicker is too slow, it's like being in the discotheque under a stroboscope. Everybody moves like this. Obviously, this is what you would like to, uh, to afford. But these two topics define flicker. And if we know about these two topics, frequency and the, um, and the size of the pulse, this is where the IEEE recommendation comes in. IEEE is an international recommendation. I'm sure you know the IEEE um, uh, organization, and they have published um, a recommendation that we specify in all of our drivers. So if you downloaded a, a, a spec sheet from an elderly driver, you'll see this graph. And this graph helps you to see if this flicker is acceptable for human beings or not. And it's not only elderly who, who, uh, who support this, there are other driver manufacturers too, we have to be honest here. We, Xicato has integrated drivers, they follow this IEEE recommendation as well. And this is good because in the end, it's our objective as well to get better light in the industry. 
but there are many driver suppliers who do not comply. This is also true. True positive modulation drivers do not comply. So don't do that. Don't specify them. Right. Let me try to explain IEEE. The first thing you see in the graph is, uh, well, there's a vertical X and a horizontal X. <laughs> the horizontal X, this is where the frequency is being uh, depicted. And then the vertical X, it's the, um, the size of the pulse, the amplitude. The three colors that you see, green, yellow, and white, those are colors that the IEEE organization came. They define those colors. If the frequency amplitude components are in the green area, it means that Flickr is acceptable for human beings. Green, okay. White, not okay. Yellow in the middle, this is where it is at risk. And now you see all those dots there. The dots that you see in this graph, so not the colors itself, but all the different shape, shapes and sizes of dots, that's information that we supplied as Eldolet, and this is where the data of the driver come in. So basically this is the characteristics of the dimming process at which amplitudes and which frequencies are being used, and that information is plotted in, in this graph. And you'll see this at 10 different dimming levels because you need to understand that if you dim a driver light to 90%, or if you dim to only to, to, 10, to, to 10%, you have different ways, well, that, that modulation is taking place. And all of those different components are being plotted in the graph, and you see with the other led that it's always in the green or in the yellow area, which means acceptable for human beings. And if you would take a positive modulation driver, you would see that most of the dots would be in the white area. That would be not okay. So it's objectifiable for you. So don't believe me, check it out yourself. That specification of this, uh, of this recommendation help you in, in, uh, in making good light as, uh, as such. I hope this is clear um, and that's it. Right, different topic, same technology, cameras. So up till now, I talked about the impact on human beings. Now we'll talk about the impact on cameras. And first, the claim to fame of elderly drivers. Elder led drivers can be easily used in uh, studios, in TV studios. So, uh, well, obviously I'm from the Netherlands and the whole Dutch TV news, also many German studios and uh, French studios as well are being equipped with elder led drivers inside. Because if you record light that is being made with elder led drivers with such a specialty HD camera, there is no interference at all. And this is what I will try to teach you as well. Because cameras flicker too. Did you know that? A camera flickers too. And a camera has, well, you know, there's a shutter in front of the lens. And the shutter is nothing else than a little door that opens and closes in a certain frequency that lets light in. And you have cameras with fixed shutter times, fixed frequencies. And you have cameras with variational shutter times, variable frequencies, variable shutter times. Right. As I told you earlier, LED light flickers many times. Most drivers that are being used out there are positive modulation drivers, and they do flicker. Um, and if they have a fixed frequency, that's bad news. But some drivers also have vari variable frequencies, like, like Eldolet. And, and that's something where the match of that driver and that camera, that arranges interference in your recordings. Because if the camera frequency, the camera shutter times, and the dimming frequencies of your LED are 100% in line, if they both dance to the same beat, there is no interference. But if the camera shutter times and the dimming frequencies of your LED are not in line, if they dance off beat, I will always say if you're the loser in the discotheque who dances off beat, then you get striping in your, uh, in your messages. And this is, uh, again, down to the choice that the driver manufacturer makes in whatever frequencies he is using in his dimming process. And not a few to understand, I'm going one step deeper. I'm going to teach you about the specialty cameras. So CCTV cameras or HD it's, uh, studio cameras or um, video conferencing cameras, um, those are based on fixed shutter types, 50 or 60 hertz. Um, I never know, this is to do with the TV systems in Europe and in the States. I believe Europe has 50 hertz and the States 60 hertz or the other way around. 
I don't know, I never, I never know this, but this is why those specialty cameras have, have these fixed frequencies. Now, most pulse width modulation drivers, um, they have fixed frequencies too, and there, there's a big chance that they cannot be divided by this 50 and 60 hertz of those fixed cameras, if you wish. And that results in, in bad striping. But now I'm going to teach you something more. The Eldolet drivers that we use, um, the variable frequencies that we use are not randomly chosen. It's not, let's just pick another um, uh, frequency that we use. No, we, we have designed the variable frequencies to be in line with these cameras because we always use multiples of the camera sample frequencies, which are 25 and 30 hertz, which makes them always in line with these specialty cameras, with these 50 and 60 hertz cameras. And the fact that they're in line uh, basically make sure that you never have striping or rainbow effects there. So again, a summary, positive modulation drivers and the specialty cameras, bad news, don't do that. If you use Eldolet, it's perfectly well. And don't get me wrong, uh, you, I, I urge you not to believe me. This is an important message too, because uh, you should always, especially the design community, validate whatever is said commercially, um, because this can be tested easily. And I've had several lighting designers. There was a big lighting designer in Germany. You actually said, hey, good story. I don't believe you. I'm going to do a test. And after that test, he came back to me and he said, you're right. This camera with your driver and three other positive modulation drivers with you, it was perfectly nice and smooth. And with all the rest, it was horrible and lots of um, lots of striping. And that's the claim to fame of LLED drivers. We can be used easily in this HD or studio uh, CCTV or um, video conferencing environments. I hope you're still with me. I'm going to take a little sidestep. Um, uh, two more topics, and then I'll go into the uh, um, question and question mode. I'm going to give you a little bit of electrical knowledge too, because sometimes I'm sure as a designer, you have to talk to electrical installers and they bombard you with technical questions and you think, whoa, I never knew this. Or you don't know how to handle this and I'm trying to give you a little bit of ammunition here in order to talk to geeks, because that's also crucial for you, for your magic to happen. I'm going to talk to you about the difference between AC drivers and DC drivers. I'm going to talk to you about the difference in worldwide power grids. Why is that crucial? And then a very nice one is constant current versus constant voltage. I would say in the questions that, that, that I do receive from the design community, this is by far the number one question I get every other, well, every day basically as well. Right, let me start with AC and DC drivers. Very simple. An AC driver can be directly connected to mains. So there is a mains connection. That's an AC driver. AC alternating current, that is mains. Right. Some drivers though are DC drivers they don't have a mains connection. They have a low voltage connection. It's a bit comparable with my laptop. My laptop here, I have my laptop here. Um, I hope you can see this. This connection that actually goes into my laptop, this is for the power supply, and my power supply is a 20 volt connection. And that has a one side mains, and this, I can touch that, that goes into, into, into my laptop, um, and that is, uh, uh, 24 volt. Drivers uh, have that too. Some drivers have that too. Um, and uh, those are called um, uh, DC drivers. So you, with a DC driver, you need to specify a separate power supply uh, that actually make that, uh, make, that, uh, make that happen. That's, uh, that's one. Learning number one, AC, DC drivers. In AC... This might be a good time to um, respond to one of the questions that have come up about the AC versus DC drivers. This is in reference to a question regarding PoE systems that operate on DC versus AC. Does question. does dimming um, improve or or does it? Yeah, that's always a tough question. To the yeah, PoE. I actually would like to uh, uh, have this question uh, being uh, set in in next topic because this is actually where controls comes in. Power of Ethernet PoE is always tough. Quality of light is tough to manage there. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's uh, it's there. We've decided not to go that route yet, possibly, because in the end, it's all about creating good light and the fact that we have DC going to the to the LED, yeah, so it's AC, and that we actually convert that into that current modulator or not that go into the LED. This is what the, this is what this uh, this uh, this arranges, and there is. There are several languages that can come in. So that's DALI, N-Light, 0 to 10, DMX. 
And Paul Rove needed you you use that means, and then the stability of this means is crucial as well in order to create good light, yes or no. And that is tough to manage. I'll talk about that next week, if that's okay with uh, with you. Thank you. Today, I would like to focus on the fact that you have different AC power grids. The world is different. Europe and Asia Pacific, where I live, is 220, 240 volt AC. The States, where you live, has 120 volt AC. It's a different power grid. A driver must have the capability to be able to talk to that power grid. Some drivers are only suitable to work in US or in 120 volt AC whereas other drivers are only suitable to work in 220 volt AC in Europe and Asia. Mm, and this is what you have to know if you do a luminaire. If you are a designer in, in, in the US and you specify a project in, in Berlin, you better make sure that the luminaire that you specify has a driver inside that actually has a capability to connect to that mains. Because if you don't, well, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. It's the same as with TV systems. And by the way, again, I'm selling like Elbelet to you now, I would say most of our drivers are universal input, so they can be used anywhere over the world. We are traditionally, we, we are a Dutch company. We've always made universal drivers and we've been acquired, we've been uh, uh, bought, if you wish, by Acute in 2013, and they would never have done this when our drivers would not be capable to actually fit the USA market. So I hope that is, uh, that is, that is clear for you. Right, second technical question, if we talk about um, drivers, why, hey, are do you are you offering as led two types of technologies and one is called constant voltage and the other is called constant constant current and then my answer is always very simple the reason why we have two different technologies is that we have two different types of drivers we have sorry two different types of leds apologies here we have constant current leds and they require a constant current driver and we have constant voltage LEDs and they require a constant voltage driver. And that's it. Um, obviously, I'm going to explain the difference, but in essence, that's, that's, that's the reason. And let me start with, the, I would say, the default. The default is constant current because this is where you can use a driver as a tap. You just open or close the tap. You define the amount of current that the driver needs to give to the LED. That driver must be programmed. 300 milliamp, 862 milliamp, and if, if that is actually programmed in the driver, this is the DC current that it actually gives to the uh, to the LED. It must be set by well by by somebody, in, in the driver must be programmed. Constant voltage is a bit different because the LEDs that are being connected are different because the LEDs is not it's not a single module. It's actually an array of low power LEDs, and if you have an array of LEDs, an LED strip then you better make sure that your array of, I don't know, three meters of LEDs, that the first LED has exactly the same illumination level as the last LED. You need to arrange uniformity in your, in your light levels. And this is where constant voltage drivers come in. They manage that. And if you then connect a certain amount of LED strip to that constant voltage driver, it actually calculates the amount of LEDs that are connected and then automatically gives that amount of current to that, uh, to that LED, to that string, in order for that light to give the right light level. It's not something that you have to program manually, that is done automatically. And technically, I would say this is the most important differentiator between a constant current and a constant voltage driver, because there is constant current LEDs and constant voltage LEDs. That's it. And constant voltage LEDs, you all know them. Companies like LED Linear are, and um, they are in the line card I saw from uh, Illumination, uh, Illuminations as well. Obviously, uh, they are literally down the road here in, in, uh, in, in, in Germany. Um, that is a company that makes only constant voltage fixtures because it's architectural lighting. It's sleek, it's slim. This is what you as design community love many times. So constant voltage is crucial for the lighting um, lighting design community as, uh, as such as well, because of the effect that it's architectural lighting and nicely uh, nicely made. But this is the difference between constant current and constant voltage in, in, in technology as, uh, as such. I hope that is, uh, that is clear. My last topic of today is dimming curves. And I got a special request from somebody to basically talk about that. And this is where I'm going to teach you about, yeah, the dimming experience making sure that your dimming experience is uh, is right and that if you use the the slider or the rotary switch that it just does exactly what it is that you need to that you need to create and it sounds very trivial 
But if I want to dim my light, this is what I want. You see on the screen now that you want the position on your slider to be 100% in line uh, linearly with the light level. And it's so trivial, but so strange sometimes. So if my slider is at 75% or about 75% of light, this is what many times happens. Dead travel of the dimmer. My slider is at 50% and my light is still at 90. So it's not really bad news and my light is not exploding and I can still use my light, but in the way that the user actually interacts with this light is not perfect. And this is where you need to understand if you, if you want to specify this about dimming curves. Because in the end, I'm going again to take you on the root of the human eye. The root of the human eye, let's start down here. This is what I want to create, a linear line between light levels and position of my slider. You have to accept from me that the human eye has an inverted logarithmic response. The human eye sees the LED. Uh, knowing that the human eye is inverted logarithmic, I need my LED to be logarithmic because the human eye sees the LED and this is my linear line that I want to achieve. So objective LED to be logarithmic. In order for my LED to become logarithmic, I have two influences. I have the driver and the dimmer or the controller. Um, and again, now we dive into the technology, not all dimmers or all controllers have implemented the same dimming curve. Some dimmers have a linear curve. And if my dimmer is linear, I need my driver to be programmed logarithmically because my LED needs to be logarithmic and the human eyes inverted logarithmic and that's what I want to achieve. So if my dimmer is linear, I need my driver to be logarithmic. But the other way around, if my dimmer is logarithmic, I need my driver to be linear. And that's the reason why in elder led drivers, I would say in many drivers, there is a choice again in linear or logarithmic programming of their driver. It's the same what I just explained to you in setting the current in milliamps, you can also change the dimming curve of the driver. In essence, it's only for one topic is to make them better compatible with the control systems out there. Because if they're both the same, both linear, it's bad news. They must be complementary. Oh, that, is, that is understood. I'm going to make it a little tougher for you because some elderly drivers don't have two choices, we have four. Four dimming curve selections in some elderly drivers, from linear, that you see here, to soft linear, to squared, to logarithmic. Four choices. Why? Only one answer. Compatibility with controllers. And I will talk about controllers next week, but it's about making sure that that works well, that you have the best visual experience if you start dimming them. And this is where your knowledge comes in as a designer too. Right, forget all this, because I'm going to make this simple for you. Because I'm going to link this again to controls. Because in DALI, not so big in the USA, big in Europe and Asia Pacific, this is never a problem. Because DALI has standardized this. DALI has solved this. Because DALI controllers always sense on a linear curve. And then every DALI driver that you're being used has a logarithmic curve inside. End of story. Point taken, solved. One to 10, zero to 10, your world, the USA world, I would say, is not really uh, defined. I would say the default is the same as European DALI. Linear curve being sent out by the, by the driver, sorry, by the dimmer, the driver should have a logarithmic curve inside. But there are many zero to 10 volt dimmers or controllers who do that the other way around. Like Lutron, Lutron zero to 10 does it exactly the opposite way. A Lutron zero to 10 volt controller sends out the logarithmic curve and then your driver should have a linear curve inside. And this is the reason why we are also fully compatible to Lutron. <laughs> That's a bit strange because in controls we are competitors, but also here um, we work perfectly well with, with Lutron control and with Crestron and whatever, because we have that choice in driver compatibility uh, linear and uh, and it's the fact that you just have to know what you have to specify in order to make it work and this is uh, this is a choice and then um, Lutron 0 to 10 volt they send out a logarithmic curve and then the driver should be programmed with lin or with soft lin 
and that's a matter of taste. How would your user actually deal with this uh, with this light? Right, in DMX and DMX RDM, uh, color mixing squared or log, and if you want white, dynamic white lighting, then log is a preferred way. Right, I've bombarded you with info. We have five more minutes. I'm going to give you a little summary of what we learned today. Quality of light when it comes to proper dimming, when it comes to flicker, when it comes to interoperability and the controls agnosticness is what the driver offers to you. An LED never ever dims uh, by itself and the driver takes care of the flicker. The driver is the tap. And if you have a stupid tap, it flickers badly. And if you have a clever tap, like Eldolet, then it can dim perfectly to 0.1%. Okay? It's lower than dim to dark. You have no harm for flicker because we comply to IEEE. And next week we'll talk about controls. And this is where we talk about interoperability. And I hope this basically gives you a little bit of background of what this boring component, because many people think it's bloody boring. It's not. It's crucial for you to understand that the choice of your driver makes a big impact on how basically you create, you create your light. And this is how I would like to end at least my presentation. Four more minutes. I'm perfectly well on time. This, uh, I'm quite happy actually, to be honest, uh, Hosan. <laughs> Are there any questions to me? That was, wonder that was wonderful, Hey. And just as a reminder, before we jump into questions, again, next week, same time, Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard, uh, yeah. part two of the Eldoled uh, driver series. Uh, as, as Hey mentioned, it's going to be more on the controller side. And um, uh, that, that, was a, that was a great um, kind of introduction uh, as, as far as driver essentials. Uh, hey, there are a couple questions that have come in. Um, I'm just going to kind of plow through and, and answer. I've already answered one of them that um, if you are going to request a recording of this presentation, we'll be certain to follow up with an email um, to be able yes. to have that presentation available to you. I will um, also I will, I will include, by the way, in my uh, in my uh, summary email, some links to some YouTube films that we made by you can actually see the difference. I have a, a Flickr demonstrator as well that you can actually see for yourself. The recording will be shared as well. And I will do that now. And also next week, I will do two different uh, separate summaries to all uh, Registra registrars, I hope that my English is correct to uh, to uh, to today's session. Okay. Uh, also, uh, hey, one one other individual is asking if um, if the presentation itself can be pr um, provided. Yes, I can. Of course, yes, I can. Uh, I can share that. I can make a PDF out of it, and we can uh, uh, have to uh, discuss internally. But I will. I will. If you, I can, I will follow that as well as a PDF file. Yes, no problem. Okay, whatsoever. wonderful. All right, let's jump into a few questions. Uh, so, so here's here's one question. When I dim down one of your drivers, um, believed to be the 100 forward slash F um, with onboard DMX level to the to one of 255, they take a linear LED and wave it through the air and can detect stroboscopes. Curious about this. So it's actually a good question. I mean, uh, so in essence. I don't say that our drivers are flicker free. That's an important message because our drivers also modulate the current. The question is how bad or how good is that? Let me rephrase that. Um, is it good enough for human beings or not? And this is where this IEEE recommendation comes in. So this is where the IEEE actually said certain components, uh, certain combinations of frequencies and amplitudes are okay to use and others are not. So it could well be that if you, sometimes uh, uh, people check for Flickr and they, they do things like this, eh? or uh, you actually see that and, and that remains that remains valid, but that's not, object, that's not um, objectifiable as such. That's not according to a regulation. So this is what we solve by communicating the IEEE recommendation. I hope that's clear. I'm not saying okay. the drives are Flickr free. They're acceptable for human beings when it comes to Flickr. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, we're coming up at two o'clock. There's one more question. I just want to thank everyone for joining us today. And hopefully you you've your... already registered for next week. Um, so so this, this other question, hey, is uh, also from the same individual. Um, so they love the 211D. Yes. But does Eldoled have a mains voltage zero to 10 volt unit? Uh, Ooh, they good use... question. No, no, we so don't. They, Unfortunately, we don't. No, no, right. no. It's also it's a, it's a DC driver, and it's one of the few constant voltage zero to ten volt drivers available in the market because technically that is bloody difficult to to manage. 
and yeah. unfortunately, not really, and unfortunately, not available in mains, uh, only in the in 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 the DC in the DC variant, and then you specify so the controller. So the answer to your question is no, unfortunately. But you can still have perfect zero to ten volt constant voltage dimming. That's very rare. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Hey. And thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you for your time and, and I hope to see you all again uh, next week. Okay, take care everyone. Bye bye. I remain I remain on because you never know if another question might pop up and uh, I have a, I have a possibility to still answer that. You're welcome. I do. I see a thank you. So that's good too. Yeah. <laughs>